The Department of Biology at the University of Bergen has a mesocosm facility at its marine field station which is located in Espergren, south of Bergen. This installation here in Bergen or south of Bergen at Espergren, it's one of the older uh, installations in uh, Europe I would say and it has been uh, more or less continuous running for now soon three decades. We are trying to look at a few questions that are interconnected. One thing is this old question whether this, uh, the basic algae, microalgae in the, in the ocean, the diatoms, actually are the staple food for the important zooplankton, then its turn is also the staple food for the fish. Diatoms has been thought as being the main primary producers that, uh, in the first step in the straight classic food chain up to fish for many decades. And it turns out that diatoms are potentially either not so nutritious as we thought before, or it might also even be toxic. So to find out about that, we have actually tried to assemble a number of scientists that has been uh, promoting these different questions. Researchers studying the marine ecosystem are faced with the problem of trying to control a huge, uncontrollable environment. One of the tools they have developed to address this challenge is a mesocosm facility. When you're studying uh, the marine environment, it's a problem of studying the same organisms all the time, especially in the pelagic, you know, there, there is an exchange of individuals all, all the time. And one way of solving this is to enclose the water mass and study it over time. The mesocosm, that is something that is between the lab and the field. And the field is, uh, uh, you know, it's an uncontrolled system, it's a natural system. That's the system we want to know something about. While in lab we have full control, but in, uh, on the other side it's an artificial system. Uh, mesocosms contains many trophic levels in the same system. And since these are interacting in a very complex manner, it's almost impossible to predict this with modeling, and it's also impossible to contain this in lab because it's a sm too small volume. Um, to set up these mesocosms, we first attach these floating rings along this raft here. And then we get out these uh, special design bags. These bags here, they are made of very sturdy material, so they, they can take a, a gale or even a light storm. Uh, also, this can be made in many, many different sizes. We are now using 11 cubic meters because it's, uh, it's a very handleable size. Then we attach the bag to the rings and then we fill the bags with a pumping system, a specially designed pump that does not crush or destroy uh, these, the plankton we, we put in there. And in, then in the end we put in this uh, system here, it's an aeration system that, uh, that mixes the water about 40 times per day. So the whole environment is totally mixed, meaning you only need to take one sample. The, the setup is such that we have a blank mesocos here. There's nothing going on in this one. It's just a mesocos we set up in the sea. It's a, uh, a bag that we just fill with the water from the outside and we treat with nothing. This is really to show that uh, the bag itself does not, does not create a big effect. We had to do that to say that the bag itself is not disturbing the system in that sense because otherwise all the other treatments would be meaningless. So and here in number six we can see that it's much more growth. This one is treated with um, an algae we isolated from the fjord last year. And this was quite successful. We see a, a range of uh, uh, intensity here and this is then the highest treatment.